Welcome to the Caterpillar Edwards Demonstration Learning Center. We are just outside of Caterpillar World Headquarters based in Peoria, Illinois. Now here at the Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center, we're awfully excited to host the SCM program. Now these SCM products, you're going to see a lot of simulator similarities between those of Caterpillar products of old. And that's no accident. They have built these machines on our rich Caterpillar heritage. Now let me start off by talking about our demonstrator instructors or equipment operators that we're going to be watching today maneuver these SCM products. So these guys, they've traveled the world over, both demonstrating equipment and training. So the way these folks operate is exactly how these machines are intended to run. I encourage everybody after the demo to speak with the operators get their viewpoints on these machines, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at their opinions of these SCM products. So first off, we've got a demonstrator instructor, Brian Kane, out on that SCM 656D, and he's out there doing a really nice job. Brian Kane, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Chad. All right. Well, I tell you what, Brian, I know that uh, that machine is full of features and benefits, and we can actually see in the cab there, so why don't you walk us through what you're doing? So today we're doing a truck loading application. So what we talk about in the field, we want to have a tight V pattern. We want to be able to uh, load the truck most efficient, uh, most efficient way. So when we talk about that, we want to have tire revolutions. We want the machine to be able to, uh, the hydraulics, as far as picking the, the bucket up or the load, to match what gear we're in, the selection of speed, and everything like that. So the operator doesn't have to slow down through the cycle. He's able to... Uh, he's able to load the truck more efficiently. So we have uh, what's called a return to ready on this machine. It works uh, two different ways. So when the operator goes into the pile, like I'm doing right now, he loads the bucket. And then when they're backing up, they're able to pull back on the joystick and it goes to a detent. So at that detent, pretty much it raises it for, for them. So you don't have to concentrate on that. You can concentrate on where you're going and what you need to do with the task at hand. Once we dump the pile into the truck or whatever we may be loading, then we're able to go to a detent down. And pretty much that returns it to ready or gets the bucket flat to whatever the operator needs to do. So that's kind of how the return to ready works, Chad. Excellent. Well, I tell you what, Brian, I can tell that using the load sensing hydraulic system in that 656D, it looks like it's very easy to operate, very comfortable, and that penetration bucket is uh, easy to fill. Every, every bucket you threw on that truck was at uh, max capacity, so that must be handy as an operator. All right, so we, we're going to have this uh, Caterpillar CT660 dump that material on our makeshift road here. So we're doing a building project today, and so to do that, it takes a fleet of equipment. And luckily, SCM offers a multitude of machines for our customers. So we just saw the wheel loader there. Now we're going to bring in the SEM 816 track type tractor. We got Dwayne Jones in that tractor, and he's going to walk us through a couple of things on that on that dozer. Dwayne, can you hear me? I sure can, Chad. Well, I tell you what, Dwayne, I know you've spent a lot of time in a track type tractor, and you've had an opportunity to be on that SEM 816. Can you walk us through what that machine does for you as an operator? Oh, sure, Chad. What we're going to demonstrate here is a normal application for a dozer such as this. So we're building a road so your uh, truck would haul in your material and a dozer would knock it down and spread it to uh, build that surface. So as you notice, as I hit that pile, dozer has plenty of power to push right through it in a spreading application. It gets that power from this hydrostatic transmission that's built into this machine. That hydrostatic does a lot for the operator. What I can do, what it allows me to do, as I don't have set gear speeds, meaning I don't have first, second, and third, I kind of have an infinite control over my ground speed. So I can turn the hydrostatic transmission up or down to match the ground speed that I need to uh, the con job conditions that I'm working in. So as I'm going in here spreading this, I can slow it down to a, just a snail's pace as I'm going through there. And if I need some more speed, I just ramp it up. That's what that hydrostatic does uh, on this transmission. It makes it real operator friendly. Um, these SEM machines, their competition is running a geared transmission, so they don't have that variable speed like that. 
and they also have uh, multiple controls for steering where this has one multi-function control which allows me to steer this machine with just one hand and also control my travel speed with that same hand which is very operator friendly at the end of the day the operator goes home a lot less fatigued after he's run this machine all day uh, some of the other nice features that we've incorporated in this SEM machine is the maintenance free undercarriage so they've kind of adopted that from our Caterpillar already existing undercarriage so that means it's maintenance free on the pins and bushings so those are sealed bushings you don't have to worry about lubing them through the lifetime of that track the only time you need to uh, do any work to them is once they've reached their life expectancy and they have to be replaced. Excellent. Well, Dwayne, I appreciate that. So as we watch that 816 track type tractor work alongside the Caterpillar 323, I want to talk about a couple more things on that dozer. Uh, first of all, the blade. You know, it, it seems like a, a blade on a dozer like that is a simple product, but that particular blade is an SU blade. That blade actually offers 20% higher productivity compared to the industry average machine. So that blade has a lot of technology built into it, even though it's just simply a piece of steel. It helps roll that material and keep that operator extremely productive. So again, keeping our owning and operating costs down, keeping productivity high, SEM, the 816, is absolutely the uh, product for the job. So while the SEM 816 moves its way out, again, we've got that Caterpillar 323 up there on the bench. We've got Josh Hayes that has just come in on this SEM 919 motor grader. Now, I know the motor grader doesn't need any introduction, but I might add that the Caterpillar machines, the motor graders, helped build a good number of the interstate system throughout the United States and this SEM 919 was built on that heritage platform from Caterpillar. It's an excellent machine. We've got an excellent operator out there on that machine. Josh, currently you're running that machine. It's a 15-ton machine. Got about 188 horsepower and a 14-foot mallboard blade. Is that a pretty good uh, setup for an operator such as yourself? You bet, Chad. It sure is. As you can see, I uh, just demonstrated the versatility of the tight turning radius of this machine. It's uh, got great balance, um, and uh, the way the machine is equipped, you'll notice that it's got articulation in the back, the wheels and the front lean left and right, and I also have a 14-foot moldboard, which gives me great uh, reach and the versatility of the machine. So this is a great example here of being able to see to the right of the machine of how much reach an operator can get to the right or to the left of the machine. Um, having that reach to the left or to the right is very important because you never know if you need to turn a tight radius or maybe do some ditching or possibly do a uh, slope work. So I'm gonna come around here and go from that tight turning radius and demonstrate uh, the uh, versatility with the reach up on a slope. Uh, you'll notice as I come around here, um, I'm using articulation, wheel lean, and it's uh, all the functions are very common to me because they're just exactly like the G or the H series machine. Um, so everything uh, is laid out in a pattern that makes sense. Now, you'll notice as I come up on this slope, I'll articulate the back of the machine so it stays on stable ground. And I'll bring the front of the machine up on the slope and circle the blade around and I'm going to bring this slope down. So you notice with proper operating technique, proper, proper machine technique and setup, I can reach all the way up that slope and bring this down as I come across. Um, another great application in this is uh, you have as much reach downhill as you do up. So if you're trying to uh, clean the bottom of ditches out, you can do that from the roadbed reaching down into a ditch. So I'm going to come on across here and uh, I want to talk a little bit also about the cab in this machine. This cab has great visibility. Uh, I can see very well outside into my work area. You'll notice that the cab is actually mounted on the uh, front part of the, the frame. That way I always have the same visual all the time to the working area or the blade area of the machine. Where some competitors' machines, the cabs are mounted on the back and when you articulate, the front of the machine moves around. So what I'm going to do is pull up here in front and demonstrate another nice feature on this machine. You'll notice that I have the blade all the way uh, extended to the right-hand side. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the blade back under the center of the machine and I want to show you how easy it is to do that. So basically what I need to do is bring my blade back, circle the blade back under the center of the machine and what we call the link bar, I want to be able to put the pin, pull the pin on the link bar to move the moldboard back under the machine. So with the flip of a switch in the cab, all I have to do is flip that switch, put the blade on the ground and you can see the lift cylinders are moving and I can bring the link bar back under the center of the machine, lock the pin back in the link bar and within a matter of a few seconds uh, cycle the hydraulic oil here and I'm back to work. So that saves a lot of time having to manually pull that pin out. So you know, at the end of the day, I can get more uh, productive work done, more efficient work because the machine is in motion and uh, working at all times. You know, Josh, that's awesome. As you go to set up for your next movement here, I want to throw in a couple of things here. You know, the tandem housing on that motor grader, it's built on the Caterpillar Legacy design. And that doesn't seem like a whole lot, but as Josh was doing that high banking maneuver, you know, those tandems and, and maneuverability that they offer in the oscillating axles, that helps improve his maneuverability and his ability to stay productive on the job site, as well as simple things like the optimized curvature of the blade itself to improve production. So, Josh, I'm gonna I'm gonna step back here one more time and let you kind of take him through these next few movements. Okay. So you can see now I'm uh, working a shoulder of a road bed here. So you can see again great visibility with this uh, cab. Uh, I've got the blade underneath the machine, and I have all the same. Uh, capabilities of with this machine is what I'm used to with the uh, G and H series models here, and you know I haven't talked much about hydraulics yet, but you know this machine has a great feel to the hydraulics, uh, very crisp, very clean. Um, the hydraulic system in the lift cylinders has the float feature, which is very nice. Uh, Taking the blade in and out underneath the machine, that float feature is very important because you're able to do that without making any uh, indentations in the ground. So, you know, the way the levers are set up um, is very important because doing those articulated turnarounds like I just demonstrated right there, the, the layout of the machine makes sense. You articulate by, you know, pulling the lever to articulate and also pulling the lever the same way will lean the front wheels. So very intuitive. You know, Josh, you bring up some good points about the hydraulics. Those load sensing hydraulics, they do an excellent job of reducing heat and fuel consumption. And you know as well as I do, it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in, fuel consumption is a major, major issue. That's, that's huge, you bet, you bet. And having all the characteristics of the machine um, is very important with fuel consumption. I think you touched on the curvature of the moldboard. Being able to have that material flow like it should reduces fuel consumption and uh, you know coupled with the torque converter transmission uh, seems to work very good uh, very user friendly you have six forward gears three reverse gears and um, it's nice and simplistic you just put it in gear and go and it does what it should do yeah absolutely absolutely a couple small other features on that machine hydraulically uh, driven fan also helps reduce fuel consumption so a hydraulic on-demand fan is a lot more efficient than your old standard belt driven fan and this machine it has it has everything you need to get the job done again regardless where you're at in the world you're saving fuel you're keeping your operator fresh and you're able to get the job done all right. Well, Josh, we appreciate all your help there, buddy. You bet, Chad. I see the rollers coming in behind me, so I'm going to turn it back over. Absolutely, yeah. We've got the uh, SCM 518 soil compactor coming in. And, you know, we it's kind of the unsung hero out here today, probably, if, if I had to guess. But this machine's extremely important. At the end of the day, once we've loaded the material, we've spread it out, we finish grade it with the motor grader, we have to then compact it. So whether we're building a road, which is what we're simulating here, or a building pad, we have to compact that material so that we can then, as we build upon it, keep it strong and keep it tight and build it to engineering specifications. So this SEM 518 is one of a handful of uh, soil compactors this SEM builds and it does an excellent job for us.
Dwayne, are you out there, buddy? I sure am, Chad. Well, I tell you what, why don't you walk us through this smooth drum roller real quick? Sure, no problem, Chad. As you mentioned, uh, these smooth drum rollers, they're pretty important on any construction site. You won't see a construction site out there where they're building a road or a building or anything like that that doesn't require some sort of compaction. So you're going to see one of these rollers on that job. Uh, luckily, this roller is built with a universal front end. So not only can we do smooth drum compaction like we are right now, compacting for a road surface, but we can also do a, a shell kit with a pad foot on it. And what that does is when we're actually building up to a certain elevation where we want to get deep penetration and get good compaction for density, we can put that shell kit on this machine and get that deeper penetration so we get the adequate densities that we need. Uh, as far as operator comfort, this, uh, this machine was designed with a lot of operator comfort in mind. They mounted the cab so that it reduces the vibrations and it's real ergonomic in the cab for the operator. Absolutely. The Go ahead, Dwayne. Sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead, Chad. You know, a couple other things. Uh, this particular ro roller, this 518 that SCM has put out there for its customers, it has a handful of uh, features on there that really set it apart from the competition. This machine has a completely sealed eccentric gear, which eliminates contamination and pro prolongs life of the machine. So that things like that, the small little touches that SEM does that most of its competition does not do is really what sets it apart. Load sensing vibra vibration hydraulics, again, helps reduce heat and fuel consumption, another valuable uh, item for our customers. This engine, it runs at 2,000 RPMs, which is extremely low, helping keep our fuel costs down as well. So you'll notice some common themes across all the SCM products low fuel consumption, uh, excellent visibility in cabs, as well as keeping that operator comfort, uh, comfortable. Small items like load sensing hydraulics, again, you don't see it on that product, but it's definitely there. And it helps that operator, which ultimately helps the contractor keep productive and stay competitive in this, uh, in this global market that we live in today. So, Dwayne, I tell you what, why don't you come down off that road? We'll bring all four of these products back here front and center, and we'll wrap this demo up. Sure will, Chad. All right. I certainly appreciate all your guys' help today. You've done an excellent job out there. With the help of the SCM products, we were able to load that material, get it hauled to the job site. The track type tractor then knocked it down and got it close. We put the fine grade to it with the motor grader and then compacted with that wheel loader. And that's what our customers do every single day, and SEM is definitely there to, uh, to help them do this. You know, I think back to 2003 when Caterpillar s signed the joint venture with SEM, and then even moving forward into 2008 when SEM was fully acquired by Caterpillar, I don't think anyone really knew where these products would be, but I must say... I must say that they've done an excellent job in staying relevant, keeping their price structure where they need to be, and keeping them productivity high exactly where it should be. So thank you, folks. We appreciate your time today. That concludes our show, and we hope to see you again soon. First of all, I'd like to talk about the easy maintain maintenance of this machine. So as an operator standpoint, we're able to uh, check the engine oil, check the hydraulic fluids, uh, check anything that's wrong with the machine on our everyday uh, operations, you may say. And then we're able to grease the machine. So on the machines, we need to grease them pretty much every day. So that's one thing that we're able to do very easy um, and do very comfortably without having to climb on the machine, without having to reach up, grab something, hang off of something. So a safety standpoint, it's very nice for the operator to be able to do that. Inside the cab, we have uh, very good visibility, so the operator is able to see the job, the task at hand, plus uh, able to see if there's uh, somebody coming up around him. So utility machines, there's always going to be somebody coming around with hand signals, wanting to move this, wanting to do that. So he's able to see that person, make eye contact with them, whether it's in front of the machine, side of the machine, behind the machine even. So very good visibility inside the cab. Uh, when you go to operate the machine, we have a joystick on the right, so we have um, very ease of operation as far as there's no two levers, there's just one lever, a joystick, so we pull back, it raises up, go down, it goes down, and then left is curl and right is dump. So 
in those motions, the operator, maybe he's doing some truck loading applications, so he wants to get back to the pile. So when we go to our down detent, it gets it to a ready to dig mode. So it gets ready to dig and it lowers the bucket down, it gets it flat, and the operator can concentrate on the pile at hand that he needs to get to. So then we talk about truck loading, we're going to talk about the gear selection. So we put it in first gear, we're able to get into the pile, get our bucket fill factor, we're able to back up, do a V pattern, and load the truck. So when we talk about the gear selection, we're going to take our hydraulics. So the hydraulics, we want those to match the gear selection that we're able to use. So the operator doesn't want to have to wait for the bucket to go up or the boom to go up. So what that means, we're at an ease of operation. We match the gear selection with the hydraulic flow. The operator doesn't have to stop, doesn't have to put in a neutral, doesn't have to do any of those things. So he's able to load the truck very quickly, very efficiently, and more product productivity has come through the day. Yeah, my first impressions of the SEM 816 that I was operating earlier were very good. Uh, the uh, fit and finish of the machine was, was very good, uh, looked very robust and durable. When I climbed in the cab, the cab was very easy to identify what all the controls did. Uh, once I started operating the machine, um, that's when you really enjoyed the hydrostatic transmission. Having that uh, fine-tune, to be able to fine-tune your ground speed as you're working to the conditions that you're working in, uh, very friendly for the operator, makes it a lot easier to run. It also had a single control for your steering and your forward and backwards travel instead of the uh, multi-levers like some of the older machines have. That gets a little cumbersome and gives a lot of operator fatigue. The single control with the hydrostatic transmission, uh, very operator friendly. Um, guy leaves the machine at the end of the day feeling uh, refreshed and not worn out. Um, as far as power of the machine with that hydrostatic transmission, uh, had lots of power. When I pushed into the truck load, the machine didn't bog down or stall at all. I was able to push through the load, no problems. Um, I can see in a, a clearing application the power that this machine has that it would be able to perform that task very easily. So we'd be able to push down brush or trees and then be able to pile those up. Uh, the machine had plenty of power for that. Once we were done clearing trees, we also had a, a three shank ripper on the back. Um, it's the uh, single parallelogram type ripper, so it gives it really easy penetration into the surface. Uh, it continually sharpens the teeth so it doesn't wear out. The teeth is fast and allows the tractor to uh, take advantage of that power and be able to rip through the ground. Um, moving on from the ripper, this SU blade that is equipped on here gave us great penetration into the ground, so I don't see that being any problem for operators out there in the field in those clearing applications to be able to remove that overburden and get down to their finished grade, then knock down their piles, building that grade back up. The uh, oval track design uh, is maintenance free. The, all the uh, pins and the rollers are sealed bushings so there's no servicing of those. Uh, they'll last a lifetime as whatever they're expected to uh, without any service. Once the components wear out of course you replace them but after they've been replaced again you don't have to continue greasing them on a daily basis. So it makes for a, a, a very operator friendly machine. Uh, there are easily accessible service points on the machine getting to the oil, checking the uh, the hydraulic oil, your fuel, and the grease points are all easily accessible for the operator. So the machine, when I was operating it over the short period that I've been on it so far, you know, first impressions are very good. You know, I felt it uh, takes me back to the older days of, you know, being on an H series or a K series machine today. So a lot of the same characteristics, which are nice. Um, first impressions, again, some of the things that I noticed that is very important is the draw bar circle mole board, you know, things of that nature. You look at the, the option to have the 14 foot mole board, which is great, which gives you three different anchor points to get reach, left or right. That's a great option to have. I noticed um, also the lift cylinders are the longer lift cylinders, so that would be in addition to what the G series machines had years ago, which of course that gets you more reach to the right or up a slope or down in a ditch. You know, make the machine more versatile. Um, of course, it's always nice to see the what we call throat clearance between the mold board and the and the bottom of the circle. You know, so carry large windrows, be able to process those windrows. That is another great you know feature that stood out to me as I was operating the machine. Again, uh, going back to the DCM and the components on there, I move up a little bit to the link bar. 
the link bar, having the seven hole link bar is crucial. Again, getting into the right hand or left hand reach. Um, you know, moving from a three hole link bar or a five, you know, the seven hole link bar is very important. And then also having those replaceable bushings in there to keep that tight at all times, very critical. So those are some of the things that I noticed right off the bat that um, puts us above the rest. Um, the other thing is being able to keep the machine tight, you know, with all the ball studs, having uh, the ability to take shims out and keep that tight at all times, very critical because you can't cut finish grade if you don't have the ability to keep the machine tight. Um, the, I noticed on the, like the tire and wheel options, very nice to have the 17.5 width tire. Um, that helps you with your tractive effort on the ground or on slopes and things of that nature. Um, moving into the cab, as I was operating the machine, the crisp feel of the, the levers very much makes you feel like you are in a K or an H series machine. Very crisp. All the levers are laid out just like those machines. Um, having the float feature is great. You know, I typically don't use float a lot, but when I pull the pin for the link bar and take the blade and move it in different positions, I utilize that float function all the time, which allows the operator to, you know, move that blade in the link bar without making any indentation in the ground, which is critical for my side of the fence. Um, uh, cab, very roomy. Um, like I said, you sit in the machine, you feel like you're at home. So it takes you kind of back to the, the older machines where when I started working construction. Moving on to the powertrain, there's a couple things I noticed. Of course, this machine is a torque converter transmission versus a direct drive transmission. Of course, all the machines I've been used to are direct drive transmissions, um, you know, in the K, the H, and the G series machines. So it was a little different getting used to the torque converter, having no left pedal or that inching pedal, if you will. Um, there's some potential benefits with the torque converter transmission, I think, with maybe new operators. Uh, a little less confusion. You just put it in gear and go, and you still have your power shift transmission. Um, so there's probably a reduction in maybe possibly stalling the machine or understanding exactly how you should shift that machine. You can just put it in gear and go. Um, the weight distribution, I felt, was really well on the machine. Of course, this is equipped with a ripper in the back and a counterweight on the front, so the distribution of the weight, the ride of the machine, the ride quality seemed to be very good as well. And, um, you know, pleasantly surprised. So, um, you know, even with trying to hold on a slope, you know, we talk about weight distribution, it can make or break the machine. The front end seems to stay right on that slope and hold it on there like you think it should. The SEM uh, 518 Compactor was uh, very ergonomic for me as the operator sitting in the seat, very comfortable. All the controls were laid out, easy to find, easy to interpret what they were. Uh, as far as the power on the machine, it was very good. I didn't have any issues with the power of the machine. It seemed to handle the work that we were doing very well. Um, uh, great ability. Uh, with the, the grade that was established, uh, once we run the machine on it, it was able to compact it down and match that grade very well. Uh, no issues there. Uh, we do have the shell kit we could have put on it and that way we would have been able to do some more deep compaction in a, a fill environment but uh, the environment we were running on was like a finished surface so we were getting ready for asphalt. Yeah, while I was operating the SEM518 earlier, uh, the fit and finish in the cab was very good. It was uh, very comfortable ergonomic wise for me as the operator. Um, all the controls seemed to be laid out very well. Didn't have any trouble interpreting what they were and how to use them. Uh, as far as the compactability of the machine, it seemed to have plenty of power for the work that we were doing. We were running in like a finish application, finishing a road for uh, surface material like uh, asphalt or concrete. They'd done a very good job at that. Um, it would have been nice if we could have ran it in an application where we would put the shell kit on it and actually done some deep uh, compaction. Um, would look forward to doing that in the future. As far as uh, power of the machine, no issues there, had plenty of power. I actually could run the throttle back a little bit, um, so that could save fuel in turn.